Welcome! This review material will focus on defining and differentiating exothermic and endothermic reactions. Simply stated, an exothermic reaction releases energy to the surroundings and an endothermic reaction takes energy in from the surroundings. This is easy to imagine when we define our reaction as the system and everything else as the surroundings. For an exothermic reaction, energy is released from the system to the surroundings and for an endothermic reaction, energy flows from the surroundings to the system. In an open system or constant pressure system, we may use the term enthalpy to describe this change in energy as reactants form products, abbreviated capital H, which will have two parts, the sign, either negative or positive, and the magnitude of change, which is usually in kilojoules per mole. For example, the combustion of methane has a negative enthalpy of 890 kilojoules, which means 890 kilojoules of energy are released per mole of methane combusted. If the sign is negative, then energy flows from the system to surroundings. Conversely, in an endothermic reaction, the sign is positive when energy flows from the surroundings to the system. In addition, we can rewrite this combustion reaction with the 890 kilojoules of energy as a product as it is released to the surroundings. Thus, for every one mole of methane combusted, 890 kilojoules of energy are also formed as a product, which is the basis for stoichiometric calculations with energy. An example of an endothermic reaction is the synthesis of nitrogen monoxide. Because the change in enthalpy has a positive value, we can think of this energy as a reactant. Thus, for every two moles of nitrogen monoxide formed, 180 kilojoules of energy are required. Again, it will be important to understand this relationship for stoichiometric calculations with energy. A third way to think of this change is to examine the average potential energies of reactants and products. In an exothermic reaction, the potential energy of reactants is higher than the potential energy of products. Thus, as reactants form products, energy is released to the surroundings. How much energy? The difference in potential energy between reactants and products. And, due to the law of conservation of matter, the energy released from the system, or reaction, is equal to the amount of energy absorbed by the surroundings, and is the basis for understanding calorimetry exercises. For an endothermic reaction, the average potential energy of products is higher than reactants. Thus, as reactants form products, energy is absorbed from the surroundings to the system, or reaction. However, an even better way to envision an exo and endothermic reaction is to include an ambiguous reaction pathway on the x-axis. When we include the reaction pathway, we can include an energy of activation barrier, which is the minimum amount of energy needed to allow the reactants to form products. This representation also allows us to label the transition state or the activated complex, which is at the apex of this reaction pathway. If the reaction being studied is a dynamic equilibrium, we now have another way to describe an exothermic reaction. The energy of activation barrier for the forward reaction is less than the energy of activation barrier for the reverse reaction. Conversely, if an endothermic reaction is at equilibrium, the energy of activation barrier for the forward reaction is greater than the energy of activation barrier for the reverse reaction. This representation also allows us to better demonstrate the effect of adding a catalyst. The catalyst lowers the energy of activation barrier, which allows more products to be formed. Conversely, one could add an inhibitor and raise the energy of activation barrier, which would inhibit the formation of products. To better envision these potential energy changes for an exo and endothermic reaction, let's again examine the combustion reaction of methane. And let's also include the two-dimensional Lewis diagrams for the reactants and products. From the balanced equation, we see that one mole of methane requires two moles of oxygen to afford one mole of carbon dioxide and two moles of water. Thus, each drawn molecule abstractly represents one mole of that molecule. We also know the reaction is exothermic because the change in enthalpy is negative, which is to say energy is exiting the system or that energy is a product. Specifically, 890 kilojoules of energy are released when one mole of methane is combusted. 
For this reaction to proceed, carbon-hydrogen bonds will need to break, and doubly bonded oxygens will need to break, which will require energy. When the new carbon-oxygen double bonds form within carbon dioxide, and when the new hydrogen-oxygen bonds form within the water molecules, energy will be released. When we compare the change in potential energies stored in the chemical bonds, in other words, the amount of energy required to break the bonds of reactants and the amount of energy released as the new bonds of the products form, we see that the amount of energy released when the products formed is greater by 890 kilojoules. Thus, we now have a fourth way of stating an exothermic reaction. The amount of energy required to break bonds of reactants is less than the amount of energy released as the new bonds of products are formed. Conversely, for an endothermic reaction, the reverse is true. The amount of energy to break bonds of reactants is greater than the amount of energy released as the new bonds of product are formed. In summary, energy either exits the system or is absorbed from the surroundings. The sign of delta H is either negative or positive. The relative energy of reactants is either higher or lower when compared to products, which can be represented in one of two ways. Either the energy of activation barrier for the forward reaction is less or greater than the energy of activation barrier for the reverse reaction, and the amount of energy required to break bonds of reactants is less or more than the amount of energy released as the bonds of products are formed. We now have several helpful ways for thinking about exo and endothermic reactions.